This video is brought to you by electricalexamcoach.com, offering the number one electrical exam prep series. You can take our paid version with the Unlimiting Testing Center, but you can also take our free version that is completely free without the Unlimited Testing Center. Also, if these videos have been helping you at any time, you can also go there and pay it forward to see it head on to the next generation. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it. Hello and welcome back to week nine of the Electrical Code Coach training program. Let's go ahead and jump right into some icebreaker questions. So this week's icebreaker questions are, when are you taking your first test? You're in week nine, you've been grinding, you're working hard, I'm proud of you. When are you gonna take your first test? And what state would you live in if you had to leave your state? So I mean, they've came in, they've marked off your state, you can't live there anymore. Where would you go if you have to? Drop it in the comments below. This week, we're gonna be working on ampacity bundling adjustments and temperature corrections. All right, now let's learn about temperature correction factors and bundling adjustments. Our primary ampacity table deals with conductors when they're at an ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, we learned last week that the values of our primary ampacity table are only true if the ambient temperature, which is just a fancy word for the temperature around the wire, okay? So the temperature in the attic is the ambient temperature of the attic. Those values of our primary opacity table are only true if the wire is in an ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, we're not up there with a the thermometer, nor do we have it constantly temperature controlled. So the code book has made provisions to derate those conductors, okay, if they're in a hotter ambient temperature. And they're called temperature correction factors. The code book has made provisions if the wires are run in extreme cold or hot ambient temperatures. The hotter the space that the wire is run in, the less amps that the wire can hold safely. And on the other side of that, the colder the weather, the more amps that the wire can hold safely. And it's just basic common sense, isn't it? If the temperature around the wire is super hot, um, you know, it's going to be less uh, able to dissipate the heat. Also, you have the, the temperature around the wire itself may be degrading the wire and insulation itself. So it's going to be able to handle less amps safely. And the same thing for cold weather. If it's cold, it's going to help, you know, stop that heat from destroying the conductor and the insulation, which will allow us to be able to carry more amps safely. Now let's look at conductor bundling adjustment. So when wires are bundled, like in a pipe, for example, they have less ability to dissipate that heat. And therefore, the code book has made provisions to derate the conductors to factor this in. And it's the same scenario, and it's really practical. If we have a lot of wires jammed in a pipe, they're going to be able, uh, they're going to have less ability to dissipate the heat from the amperage on the wire. And so in that case, they're going to be allowed to handle less amps safely. When doing temperature corrections or bundling adjustments, if the wire insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column, you can use the 90 degree C column for making your adjustments. So let's take a look at what a THHN number eight copper wire is in the 90 degree C column. So when we get to our primary opacity table, we start over on the left hand side and find our type of conductor, being sure to be on the copper side of the table. So we come down to number eight, and we're gonna come over and tee off with the 90 degree C column. Then I wanna show you um, where you can find all of the different insulation types. So when you go all the way up to the top of the 90 degree C column, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different types of insulation. And as long as your insulation is listed inside of that column, then you're going to be allowed to use that column for your deration. And you're gonna learn more about what that means here in just a few minutes. So let's see if our wire's listed. THHN, it sure is. So for temperature corrections and bundling adjustments, we're allowed to use the 90 uh, degree C value first before we apply our demand factors. All right, so how many amps is it rated for? We find out that it's rated for 55 amps. So in the 90 degree C column, number eight wire, copper is rated for 55 amps. Let's look over in the 75 degree C column. What is it rated for? That's right, it's rated for 50. Now go over to the 60 degree C column. That's right, it's rated for 40. And you'll understand why this is so important that the code book allows us to use the 90 degree C column before making our temperature corrections or bundling adjustments. All right, so THHN number eight copper is rated for 55 amps in the 90 degree C column 
but that's with an ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. But what if that conductor is running through an area where the ambient temperature is 110 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, thankfully the code book has made provisions and what it's done is it's given us multipliers. And I want you to think about them just like more demand factors. And as we look at this table, you'll see what I mean. But before we get started with this table, I need everyone to stop and do this. So if you're in the 2017, I want you to go to page 148. And I want you to cross off table 310.15B2B. It's the upper table on that page. It's the larger upper table on that page. And if you're in the 2020, I want you to go to page 159. And I want you to cross off table 310.15B2. And it's the lower table on that page. And the reason is, is it looks identical to the table that we actually need, but we don't need that table. And we never use that table. And if you were in that table thinking you were in the right table, you would be wrong. Okay, so I want you to put a giant X through it with a pen or a highlighter because you're never going to be using that table as far as testing goes. And I don't know of any reason that you would ever use it in the field. Okay, so you're going to cross off that table. Take the minute, take a minute, pause the video now and do that. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's look at the table that we actually will use. So everyone flip to page 147 if you're in the 2017 and page 159 if you're in the 2020. And let's go ahead and look over this table. So when we get to a table, the first thing that we do is we always read the black bolt heading to make sure we're in the right table. Okay, it says ambient te temperature correction factors based off of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Great, that coincides with our primary opacity table. Now let's go ahead and look at this table. Remember, we always read our tables from top to bottom, left to right, using the black bold headings to navigate the table. So it says ambient temperatures other than 86. Uh, multiply the opacities that are specified in the opacity tables to the appropriate correction factor. Now technically, these are called temperature correction factors, but I just want you to think about it as another demand factor. What do we do with the demand factors? We multiply, that's right. So what these are are just more multipliers and you'll know more about what that means here in just a few moments. Let's go ahead and take a look at this table. So starting on the far left hand side is going to be if the ambient temperature is listed in Celsius. So if your question mentions the ambient temperature in Celsius, you're going to select from the Celsius side for the temperature itself. If it's Fahrenheit, you're going to be on the far right hand of that table. OK, so if your question or real world scenario is stated in degrees Fahrenheit, you'll start on the far right hand side of the table for the temperature itself. These are temperature values underneath there. OK, and in the middle, you'll have the 60, 75 and 90 degrees C columns. OK, and those coincide with our primary ampacity table. So if you selected your conductor from the 60, 75 or 90, when you come over to this table, you'll use the 60, 75 or 90, depending on which one you selected. So starting on the left hand side, if your temperature is listed in Celsius, you're going to go down until it tees off with one of those respective temperatures. And the same thing if your temperature is listed in Fahrenheit, you're gonna go down until your ambient temperature falls into one of those respective categories, okay? And then for all of your testing, when you are using the 90 degree C column, the only column that you need to pay attention to is this one right here, okay? All right, so if we've selected our conductor from the 90 degree C column, in the primary opacity table, when we come over to this table, we'll pull our demand factor from this um, column right here where it coincides with 90 degrees C. Okay, so if you've got your highlighter, I want you to highlight this right now. All I want you to highlight, let me get my pointer out here. I want you to highlight this right here. So highlight Celsius, highlight the 90 degree part, and then highlight Fahrenheit. And the only thing you have to be careful to make sure that you do is that if the temperature is listed in Fahrenheit, it's pretty easy. You'll come over and get your demand factor from here. But if it's listed in Celsius, you have to be super careful because the temptation is, is to come right here and select your demand factor. 
but you have to be diligent to come all the way over to the 90 degree to get your demand factor. So let's go ahead and answer this question. What is the ampacity of a number eight THHN conductor in an ambient temperature of 110 degrees Fahrenheit? So we've already done the pre-work. We made sure that THHN was listed in the 90 degrees C copper. It was. And then we went for the number eight and we found out that it was rated at 55 amps in the 90 degree C. Now let's go find our ambient temperature correction factor. So we're going to head over to our correction factor table and we're going to select the proper demand factor. So being sure we first make sure that we're using the correct column based off of our question. In this case, our question is Fahrenheit. So when we get to this table, we start over here on the right hand side. And then what we're going to do is, is make sure that we're teeing off with the 90 degree C column, which is pretty easy for Fahrenheit because they're side by side. So we're going to come over. We're on the Fahrenheit side. We're going to slide down until we find 110 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately somewhere in here on your table. Then you're going to come over to here and find your correction factor. OK, so we find that in our table in the 110 degree area and you might have some ranges on this side over here. So it might say in between this degree and this degree, as long as your actual ambient temperature falls in between there, you're going to use that respective uh, part right there. So we come down, we find where it falls in between and 110 hits. We slide over and we find that our correction factor is 87 percent which means just like we've done in the past, it's just another demand factor. So it's gonna be a multiplier of 0.87. Now let's go to the next slide and we'll learn how to hatch this all out. So number eight copper is rated at 55 amps. We found that our temperature correction factor was 0.87. So we're just gonna multiply. We take our original ampacity of 55 amps. We multiply it by 0.87. That's gonna give us a new allowable ampacity of 47.85 amps. So now the wire that was once good for 55 amps is only good for 47.85 because of the ambient temperature that it's in. What is the temperature correction factor for a THHW copper conductor with an ambient temperature of 142 degrees Fahrenheit? So this question is pretty easy. It's just asking for the correction factor itself, but we still have to go through the motions. So the first thing that we're going to do is check and make sure that THHW is in our 90 degree C column of our primary opacity table. So we use our opacity tab. We flip over to our opacity table and we make sure that this insulation rating is listed in the 90 degree C column. It is. So now we're going to flip over to our temperature adjustment factor table, being sure to mind whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit in our question. Well, our question here, it's Fahrenheit. So we're going to head over to our temperature correction table, being sure to mind that we're starting on the right hand side. We're going to go down to our respective temperature range, which is 142 degrees, somewhere probably right in here. Then we're going to come over and we're going to tee off with the demand factor itself. And we're going to be sure to use the 90 degree C column. We're in the 90. We come over and we're going to find a correction factor of 0.65. And we're going to select A. Great job. What is the temperature correction factor for a USE2 copper conductor with an ambient temperature of 51 degrees C? Okay, so the first thing that we do is check and make sure that USE-2 is in our 90 degree C column of our primary opacity table. It is, so now we flip over to our temperature adjustment factor table, being sure to mind whether we're in the Celsius or Fahrenheit. In this uh, case, it is in Celsius. So we're going to look at our table here, and we're going to start here on the left-hand side. We're going to come down till we hit the 51C, and this is where we have to be careful to come all the way over to the 90 degree C column. That's why it's very important that we do the highlighting that I talked about previously if you're allowed to highlight in your area. If not, just be slow and careful. Take your time. You come down here. You come over all the way back over to the 90 degree C column, and that's where you're going to select your multiplier from. And we're going to use the 90 degree C column, and we find out that we have a correction factor of 0.76. Great job. What is the allowable ampacity of a THHW number six copper conductor with an ambient temperature of 142 degrees Fahrenheit terminating to 75 degrees C terminals? Now I want to let you know right away that when you're doing temperature corrections or bundling adjustments, it does not matter the terminal rating. Okay. As long as it's listed in the 90 degree C column, you're going to be using the 90 degree C for your starting ampacity. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is check and make sure that THHW is in our 90 degree C column of our primary impacity table. Then we're going to find our starting impacity. So when we head over there, we check THHW is in the 90 degree C column, and then we're going to find our starting impacity. And in this case, we're going to find that it's 75 amps. Now we're going to flip over to our temperature adjustment table, being sure to mind whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit in our question. In this case, the ambient temperature is in Fahrenheit. So we're going to start right here on the Fahrenheit side of this table. We're going to come down until we fall in our respective range. Then we're going to come over to the 90 degree C column for our demand factor itself. Once we find our demand factor, we're going to multiply. So we find that our correction factor is 0.65, so we're going to multiply. We take our original ampacity of 75 amps. We multiply it by the correction factor. That is going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 48.75 amps. And we're going to select B. What is the allowable ampacity of a number 10 THWN-2 copper conductor that's installed in an area with an ambient temperature of 142 degrees Fahrenheit? So the first thing that we're going to do is check and make sure that THWN-2 is in the 90 degree C column of our primary ampacity table. And it is. So now we're going to go down and select our starting ampacity. What is it good for in the 90 degree C column? A number 10 is good for 40 amps in the 90 degree C column. So now we're going to flip over to our temperature adjustment factor table. Being sure to mind whether our question is asking for Celsius or Fahrenheit. In this case, it's Fahrenheit. So when we get over to our table, we're going to start here on the right hand side. We're going to come down to our respective temperature and then we're going to come over and we're going to find our correction factor. So we're going to find that it is a 0.65 correction factor. So we take our original ampacity of 40 amps, we multiply it by 0.65, that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 26 amps. And we select B. Great job! What is the allowable ampacity of a number 4 THWN-2 copper conductor that's installed in an area with an ambient temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit? First thing we do is we check and make sure that our insulation is rated in a 90 degree C column. And it is. We're going to find that a number four in the 90 degree C column is good for 95 amps. We flip over to our temperature adjustment factor table, being sure to mind whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit. Our question is asking for Fahrenheit, so we're going to start on the right hand side. We're going to come down until we find our respective temperature range. Then we're going to come over and we're going to find our correction factor. So in this case, we find that it's a 0.71. So we take our original ampacity of 95 amps, we multiply it by 0.71, and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 67.45 amps. And we're going to select C. What is the allowable ampacity of a 2 watt XHHW copper conductor that's installed in an area with an ambient temperature of 111 degrees Fahrenheit? So the first thing that we're going to do is check our insulation and make sure that it's listed in the 90 degree C column of our primary ampacity table. Then we're going to go down and select our starting ampacity. So XHHW is listed. So now we go down to 2 watt, being sure to be on the copper side of the table, and we're going to find our starting ampacity. A 2 watt is good for 195 amps in the 90 degree C column. Now we're going to flip over to our temperature adjustment factor table, being sure to mind whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit. This is when you always reread your question two and three times. Every time I make a big step on a question like this, I'll look at the question again and make sure I'm following the steps correctly. Then when we get over to our table, we're going to start on the Fahrenheit side because that's what our question is asking for. We're going to come down to our respective temperature. We're going to come over and we're going to tee off with our 90 degree C column. And we're going to find that our correction factor was 0.87. Now all we have to do is multiply. We take our original ampacity, we multiply it by 0.87, and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 169.65 amps. And we're going to select D. Great work! What is the allowable ampacity of a 2 watt XHHW copper conductor that's installed in an area with an ambient temperature of 68 degrees C? So the first thing we're going to do is check on our insulation. It is listed and we find that the 2 watt is good for 195 amps on the copper side of our table. Now we're going to head over to our temperature adjustment factor table. We're going to make sure we're checking for Celsius or Fahrenheit. In this case, our question 
specify Celsius. So we're going to start on the Celsius side, come down to our respective temperature range, and then shoot all the way over to the 90 degree C column to get our correction factor. And we're going to find that it's a correction factor of 0.58. So we're going to take our original ampacity, multiply it by 0.58, and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 113.1 amps, and we're going to select A. So a wire that was once good for 195 amps, because of the temperature that's around the wire, it's now only able to safely handle 113.1 amps. Let's get to it. What is the allowable ampacity of a 4 aught XHHW aluminum conductor that's installed in an area with an ambient temperature of 81 degrees C? So the first thing that we're going to do is check our primary ampacity table and make sure that our insulation is listed. It is. Now we have to be careful to select from the aluminum side of the 90 degree C column. Okay, so we're on the right hand side of the table over in aluminum and we're going to make sure we're in the 90 degree C column. We're going to find that we have an allowable ampacity of 205 amps. So now we're going to flip to our temperature adjustment factor table and we're going to be uh, careful to mind that this question does state Celsius. So we start on the left hand side here. We come over and select our temperature range. Then we're going to shoot all the way over to the 90 degree C side and we're going to select our correction factor. Then all we have to do is multiply. We take our original ampacity of 205 amps, multiply it by 0.29, and now that wire that was once good for 205 amps is only going to be allowed to handle safely 59.45 amps. And we're going to select C. What size copper THHN conductor would you select for a 49 amp load in an area with an ambient temperature of 110 degrees Fahrenheit terminating to 75 degrees C terminals? First, we go to our primary ampacity table and see if our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column. Then we go and select a conductor that will cover the amp load as of right now. So we go to the 90 degree C column, in this case the copper side. We're going to go down and we're going to select a, a wire in that column that will cover the amp load as of right now. So number eight is good for 55 amps. That will cover the load before we apply the correction. And the reason we start with the smallest wire is because the code book is always looking for the smallest wire that will satisfy the code. As far as testing goes, we could always put a 2 watt on a 40 amp load or a 3 watt or something outrageous, okay? But the code is always looking for the smallest wire that will cover the load. So the first thing you do when you're doing these questions is you go find a wire that will cover the known load as of right now, then make your corrections, and then after your corrections, see if the wire is still large enough to cover your known load. I'll show you what I mean. Now we flip over to our temperature adjustment factor table. Our question was listed in degrees Fahrenheit. So we start on the Fahrenheit side of the table until we come down and find our temperature range. Then we come over and we tee off with our demand factor. Our temperature was 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So our demand factor is going to be 0.87. And we're gonna take our original ampacity of 55 amps. We multiply it by 0.87. That's gonna give us a new allowable ampacity of 47.85 amps. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, will that 47 amp wire cover our 49 amp load? And the answer is no. So now we have to go back to the table. We go back to our table and we try the next size wire up. So the next size up is a number six. Its original ampacity is 75 amps. So we take that 75 amps, we multiply it by our demand factor, and that is going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 65.25 amps. So we're good to go. That wire is still large enough to cover our known amp load, which is 49 amps. And we're gonna select C. What size THHN copper conductor would you select for a 49 amp load in an area with an ambient temperature of 43 degrees C terminating to 75 degrees C terminals? First, we go to our primary ampacity table and see if our insulation is listed in a 90 degree C column. It is, so now we select a conductor that will cover the amp load as of right now. And in this case, we're gonna find that it's a number eight, good for 55 amps, and it's good to cover the load before we apply our correction. Now we flip over to our temperature adjustment factor table. Our question was listed in Celsius, so we start on the left-hand side. We find our respective temperature range, and we come back all the way over to the 90 degree side to select our correction factor. In this case, it's 0.87. So we take our 55 amps, we multiply it by 0.87, and that gives us a new allowable ampacity of 47.85. 
Now, will that cover our known amp load of 49 amps? It will not, so we have to go to the next size wire. Number six is good for 75 in the 90 degree C column. We take that 75, we multiply it by our correction factor. That gives us a new allowable ampacity of 65.25, so we're good to go. And we're going to select C. And the reason I did this question, pretty much identical questions, but it wanted you to be mindful of whether you selected from Celsius or Fahrenheit. And you can still really end up with the same answer as far as the wire size goes. But you have to watch the distinction when you're making your selections. Now let's cover conductor bundling adjustment. Basically, it's just going to be applying more demand factors and learning how to read another table. So no big deal. When wires are bundled, like in a pipe, for example, they have less ability to dissipate the heat. And then therefore, the codebook has made provisions to adjust these conductors to factor this in. So how many amps is a THHN number four copper good for in the 90 degree C column? Well, we find that it's good for 95 amps. Now, if we read again at the top of that table, so go to the top of your primary opacity table, we find that that value of 95 amps is only true if those conductors are in an ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit and if there's not more than three current carrying conductors in a raceway, cable, or earth. So if you're in these perfect scenarios where there's not more than three conductors and you're in an ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit, all of the values in that table, our primary opacity table, are true. But if you get outside of these parameters, you have to make adjustments and correction factors. With temperature, it's called correction factors, and with bundling, it's called adjustment factors. So if we get more than three current carrying conductors in a pipe jacket or jacket or cable or the earth, you know, bundled together, we have to adjust their allowable ampacity. So they were once good for so much, but now because there's a bunch of wires together in a pipe, they're not able to handle as many amps safely, so we're going to adjust that. Let's get to it. All right, now everyone turn to page 148 of the 2017 and page 160 of the 2020. And we're going to look at the table together. Now the first thing that we always do anytime we get to a table is we read the black bold heading. It says adjustment factors for more than three current carrying conductors. Great, I feel like we're in the right table. Now what I love about this table is how simple it is. First, we always read our tables top to bottom, left to right, using the black bold headings to navigate the table. The first thing that we do is we start on the left hand side and we read the black bold heading. It says number of conductors. And that literally is just whatever the number of current carrying conductors you have, wherever it falls in that chart, you're gonna go over and you're gonna tee off with the respective demand factor, okay? So let's imagine that we had five conductors. Well, it's gonna fall in the four to six column. We're going to come over here and find that our adjustment factor is 80%, which just to make it simple, it's just 0 0.80. It's just another demand factor. It's just another multiplier. So we would take whatever our original ampacity was, multiply it by 0 0.80, and that would be our new allowable ampacity. Now we're going to learn how to count conductors because not all conductors are carrying current. Let's get to it. Now let's learn how to count current carrying conductors because not all of the conductors in that pipe are going to be carrying current and you only have to apply adjustment factors if there are more than three current carrying conductors. Let's learn how to count them. So first you count all ungrounded conductors. Those are your hots. We know that they're going to be carrying current because they're hot conductors. So you will count those. You're going to count the neutral of a two wire 110 volt circuit. A good example is 12-2 Romex. And the reason is on a 110 volt circuit, that neutral is carrying just as much current as the hot is. It'll be 10 amps in, 10 amps out. So we're going to count the neutral of a two wire circuit. We're going to count the neutral of a three phase four wire circuit. We're going to count the neutral of a three phase nonlinear load. Now your question, if you do get asked something like this, it'll say the words nonlinear load, okay? And a, a, a good example of a nonlinear load would be like a lot of lighting in a commercial building, a lot of fluorescent lighting, or like a data center or something like that. You might have a lot of nonlinear loads. And you're not going to count grounding conductors. And there are no adjustments for nipples 24 inches or less. So you count all hots, 
you count all neutrals of 110 volt circuits, you count three phase Y four wire neutral loads, you count three phase Y nonlinear load neutrals, and you, and you do not count grounding conductors. And there are no adjustments for nipples that are 24 inches or less. And there are no adjustments for sleeves that are emerging from grade that are not longer than 10 feet. So if you're emerging from grade and you go to sleeve the conductor, as long as that sleeve does not extend up more than 10 feet, you're not required to make an adjustment there either. What is the bundling adjustment factor you would apply for nine current carrying THHN copper conductors in a piece of one inch EMT? And I do want to note that D is never an option, okay? It gives us the number of current carrying conductors, so we head straight to our bundling adjustment table. So in this case, we start on the left-hand side with our number of conductors, then we come over and we find our range, and we come over and tee off with our adjustment factor. We find that our number of conductors falls in the 7 to 9 range, and we come over and we slide over and we select a 70% adjustment factor, which is just another demand factor, and we're going to select C. Great job! What is the allowable ampacity of a number four THHN copper conductor with nine current carrying conductors in a piece of one inch EMT? I do wanna note on these type questions, the test makers love to put in information like this. And they'll also add how long the conduit is. They'll say in a piece of 30 foot one inch EMT. And that information is just in there to throw you off. Okay, we're not doing pipe fill, we're doing bundling adjustments. So unless it states 24 inches or less, it doesn't matter how long the conduit is. Okay, it could be a 100 foot run of conduit, but they'll throw things like that in your questions to throw you off. So the only thing we need to know is our number four THHN copper conductor and how many current carrying conductors there are. So the first thing that we do is we make sure that our conductor is listed in the 90 degree C column. It is, so now we find out what a number four is good for before our adjustments. So we go down, we slide over in the copper column for number four, and we find that our starting ampacity is 95 amps. All right, now we look at our question again, and it gives us the number of current carrying conductors, so we head straight to our bundling adjustments table. We start on the left-hand side with our number of conductors. We come over and we tee off with our respective demand factor. So we find that ours falls in the seven to nine column and we slide over and select 70%. So we take our original ampacity of 95 amps, we multiply it by 0 0.70, and that's gonna give us a new allowable ampacity of 66.5 amps. Because there's so many wires inside that pipe that are carrying current, the wire is able to dissipate the heat or has less ability to dissipate the heat Therefore, those wires can no longer handle as many amps safely. So because of the number of current carrying conductors in this pipe, these size conductors can only handle 66.5 amps safely without degradating the copper itself or the insulation. And we're going to select A. What is the allowable ampacity of a 1 aught XHHW copper conductor with 13 current carrying conductors in a piece of 2 inch RMC? So first we see if our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. They are. So first we find out what a 1 aught is good for before our adjustments. A 1 aught copper is good for 170 amps in the 90 degree C column. Now it gives us the number of current carrying conductors so we head to our bundling adjustment table starting on the left hand side until we find our number of current carrying conductors using a straight edge to come over to tee off with our adjustment factor we find that it is 50 percent now we take our original ampacity multiply it by 0 0.50 that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 85 amps and we select b great job what is the allowable ampacity of a number six THHN aluminum conductor with six current carrying conductors in a piece of three quarter inch RMC? First, we see if our conductor is listed in the 90 degree C column. It is, so we find out what a number six aluminum is good for before our adjustments, being sure to select from the aluminum side of the table. Number six aluminum is good for 55 amps in the 90 degree C column. It gives us the number of current carrying conductors, so we head to our bundling adjustment table. 
we start with our number of conductors on the left hand side and we cross over and tee off with our adjustment factor. We find that our number of current carrying conductors falls in the four to six column and we slide over and we select 80%. So we take our original 55 amps, we multiply it by 0 0.80, that gives us a new allowable ampacity of 44 amps. And we select C. Great job. What is the allowable ampacity of a number 10 THWN-2 copper conductor that's installed in a pipe with 45 current carrying conductors? So first thing we do is we check and make sure that our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column. It is and we find that a number 10 in the 90 degree C column is good for 40 amps. We find the adjustment factor of 45 current carrying conductors is 35%. We take the original ampacity, we multiply it by 0.35 and that gives us 14 and we select D. Great job. What is the allowable ampacity of a number 10 THWN-2 copper conductor that's installed in a pipe with five current carrying conductors in an area with an ambient temperature of 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to learn how to apply them both at the same time. So the first thing we do is we check and make sure that our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column of our primary ampacity table. Now we're going to figure out first what our starting ampacity is. The number 10 on the copper side is good for 40 amps. Now we're going to head to our bundling adjustment table and we're going to find out our first demand factor. So we start on the left hand side till we find our number of conductors. We come over to our adjustment factor side and we find our first percentage. We're going to find that it's 0 0.80. Now we're going to head to our correction factor table and we are going to start on the right hand side because our question lists Fahrenheit. Then we're going to come over and tee off with the 90 degree side and we're going to find our correction factor, which is 0.82. Now we just take and do the math. We take our original ampacity multiplied by 0 0.80 multiplied by 0.82 and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 26.24 amps and we're going to select D. Great job. What is the allowable ampacity of a number four THWN-2 copper conductor that's installed in a pipe with nine current carrying conductors in an area with an ambient temperature of 101 degrees Fahrenheit? So the first thing we're gonna do is check and make sure that our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column of our primary ampacity table. Then we're gonna find our starting ampacity. Number four in the 90 degree C copper column is gonna be good for 95 amps. Now we're gonna to head to our bundling adjustment table starting on the left hand side with our number of conductors and coming over and teeing off and finding our adjustment factor. In this case we're going to find that it's 0 0.70. Now we're going to head to our primary correction factor table and we're going to start with Fahrenheit because our question lists it. We're going to come down and we're going to tee off with that demand factor and we're going to find that it's 0.91. Now we take our original ampacity, we multiply it by 0 0.70 multiplied by 0.91 and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 60.515 amps and we're going to select C. Great job! What is the allowable ampacity of a 4 aught THWN-2 copper conductor that's installed in a pipe with three current carrying conductors in an area with an ambient temperature of 115 degrees Fahrenheit? We're going to check and make sure that our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column then we're going to find our original ampacity, 4 aught in the 90 degree C is good for 260 amps. Now we're going to head to our bundling adjustment table, but in this case we only have three current carrying conductors, so it does not apply. Remember it only applies if there's more than three current carrying conductors. Now we're going to head to our correction factor table, and we're going to find that demand factor is 0.82. So we take our original ampacity, we multiply it by 0.82. That's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 213.2 amps, and we're going to select A. Great work. What is the allowable ampacity of a 250 KC mil THWN-2 copper conductor that's installed in a pipe with nine current carrying conductors with an ambient temperature of 148 degrees Fahrenheit? We're going to check and make sure that our conductor insulation type is listed in the 90 degree C column of our primary ampacity table. We're going to find that 250 is good for 290 amps in the 90 degree C column. We're going to head to our bundling adjustment table and we're going to start on the left hand side with our number of conductors and come over and tee off with our bundling adjustment factor and in this case it's 0.70. 
Then we're going to head to our correction factor table and do the same process. Starting on the right hand side with Fahrenheit, we're going to come over to the 90 degree C column and we're going to find that adjustment factor or that correction factor. And that is going to give us 0.65. Now we're going to take our original ampacity, multiply it by 0 0.70, multiply it by 0.65, and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 131.95 amps. And we select B. What is the allowable ampacity of a 250 kc mil THWN-2 aluminum conductor that's installed in a pipe with six current carrying conductors in an area with an ambient temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit? First thing we're doing is we're going to check and make sure that our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column. Then we're going to find our starting ampacity. We find that a 250 kc mil is good for 230 amps in the aluminum side. Now we're going to head to our bundling adjustment table. Starting on the left hand side, we are going to find our number of conductors coming over and teeing off with the respective demand factor, and we're going to find that it's 0 0.80. Now we're going to head to our correction factor table, starting on the Fahrenheit side, and we're going to come over to the 90 degree column and find that our correction factor is 0 0.50. Now we take our original ampacity, multiplied by 0 0.80 multiplied by 0 0.50, and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 92 amps. And we're going to select D. Great work. What is the allowable ampacity of a number 6 THHN aluminum conductor that's installed in a pipe with 11 current carrying conductors in an area with an ambient temperature of 32 degrees C? First thing we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure that our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column. Then we're going to find our starting ampacity and number six in the 90 degree C column is good for 55 amps. Now we're going to head to our bundling adjustment table and we're going to find starting on the left, finding our number of current carrying conductors. Then we're going to come over to our adjustment factor and we're going to find that it's a 0 0.50. Now we're going to do the same thing for our temperature. We're going to start down here, being sure to start on the left hand side because it's Celsius and come all the way across the 90 degree C column before we make our selection and in this case we're going to find that it's a 0.96. Now we're going to take 55 multiplied by 0 0.50 multiplied by 0.96 and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 26.4 amps and we're going to select B. Great job! What is the allowable ampacity of a one ot THHN aluminum conductor that's installed in a pipe with eight current carrying conductors in an ambient temperature of 42 degrees C? We check and make sure that our insulation is listed in the 90 degree C column. Then we find our starting ampacity. A one knot in the 90 degree C column is good for 135 amps on the aluminum side. Now we head to our bundling adjustment table, starting on the left hand side, and then teeing off with our respective demand factor for eight conductors. And we're going to find that it's a 0 0.70. Now we head to our correction factor table. Being sure to start on the Celsius side on the left hand side, we come all the way back over to the 90 degree C column and we're going to select 0.87. Then we take our original ampacity of 135, multiply it by 0 0.70, multiply it by 0.87, and that's going to give us a new allowable ampacity of 82.215 amps and we're going to select C. So the key with this is repetition, repetition, repetition. I'm so proud of you. You're doing a great job. Listen, the only way you don't get your license is if you quit. You can do this. I'm proud of you. Keep grinding. Let's get to it. This video is brought to you by electricalexamcoach.com, offering the number one electrical exam prep series. You can take our paid version with the Unlimiting Testing Center, but you can also take our free version that is completely free without the Unlimited Testing Center. Also, if these videos have been helping you at any time, you can also go there and pay it forward to see it head on to the next generation. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it.